Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today I'm going to show you a new custom firmware option for the MIUI A30. I've been keeping my eye on the A30 and waiting for it to get to a usable state. I did my review not too long ago and to say that I wasn't impressed with the software is a bit of an understatement. But I like the rest of the device before turning it on, and so I've been waiting for somebody to fix the software. And so since then there's been some custom firmware coming out for it, and I decided to check it out and see if they at least made the device usable now. Spruce is one available custom firmware, which they say is a trimmed stock OS. There's a few things that they've done here, they matched the default emulators and cores to what Onion OS uses, they've made some visual changes to make it easier so you don't have two ways to launch games, and they made it less confusing for normal users, there's some retro arch tweaks, and a whole bunch more, but the general idea is that this is just a modified stock operating system made to be better than what came with it. You can read the full GitHub page for a longer idea of what they added, but it's just, I was interested because it seems like it makes the device work, and I want to see if that was the case. And so from my experience using Spruce, it very much does that. This is basically how it should have come from MIU directly, because it actually works, with some caveats. Super Nintendo games work without issue right out of the box, there's no filter applied or anything like that. Retro Achievements is another thing that didn't work on stock, and here it works just fine. The rest is all gravy on top. The device still gets warm, the battery isn't super great, and I still get occasional complete freezes, but at least most of my major gripes about the software have been taken care of. I'm going to be super clear here, if you're going to get this device, you will want Spruce on it right away. It should be the very first thing that you do. Otherwise, I'm just back to not recommending this device at all and you should not get it if you're going to be using the stock operating system. But thankfully with Spruce, this device is in a much better spot and it's fun to use, and while Spruce isn't perfect and we'll talk about it a little bit later on, it is definitely a custom firmware that I'm going to keep my eye on just to see what updates they do here. So let's just jump into the install and it's actually pretty easy. Head to the Spruce GitHub page and you can see the list of changes here. Feel free to read through them if you want, but just know that it's what you should now consider as stock, they just made things better. Then click the download link to be taken to the releases page, and download the latest releases zip file. Go ahead and extract that zip file. It's going to take a few minutes, there's a lot of files. Now we need to format a single SD card as FAT32. I'm going to be using a 64GB card here from SanDisk, but 64GB to 128GB is enough. I don't think you need anything larger than 128. You're also going to need a branded SD card reader, and I have recommendations for the reader and the cards in my description. Go ahead and connect your SD card to your PC now. Head to the Rufus website and you want to download the portable version. Open it and make sure that the device you select is your SD card. Change boot selection to non-bootable. Make sure that file system is FAT32 or large FAT32. Then just click start and you can click yes to any warnings that you get. You now have a blank FAT32 SD card, so move over all of the extracted zip file contents. It's going to take you a few minutes. Once that's all done, at this point you need to move your ROMs and BIOS files over, and it's pretty simple. The ROMs folder is right there, and all of the system folders are inside. You can move them over from your other SD card, or just put new ROMs, whatever you want to do at this point. Personally, I always use my own ROMs and BIOS files, so I'm going to be doing that here. For BIOS files, you want to put them inside of the retroarch, dot retroarch, bios folder. If you want to use the bios files that came with the stock card, you can just transfer them all here. Once everything is transferred over, 
go ahead and eject and insert the card into your A30. The first thing you're going to notice is that the theme is very onion-like, or simpler, I guess, and that's really good. You have recents, you have favorites, game, app, and setting, all of which are easy to understand and there's no more confusion about where to launch games from. First thing you should do is head over to settings and calibration and calibrate your stick, especially if you're going to be using it for any games that use sticks. Next up, I would also connect to Wi-Fi, especially if you want retro achievements. And then to enable retro achievements, just head to app, retroarch, settings, achievements, and then just log in here and also make sure that you turn off hardcore mode. Back out to the main menu, configuration file, and save current configuration, and then you can quit RetroArch. While in app, you can turn off the LED if you like, or set the real-time clock for games that use it. To launch games, just do so through game, and if you push the menu button at the top of the device, you can add to favorites, or search, or delete the game. Overall, games seem to run and play just fine. I do have some issues exiting games, which seems to take absolutely forever for some reason, which I'm sure will likely get fixed, hopefully, but otherwise as long as you're not game hopping, it all seems to just work. The important thing here is the device can actually play games now, and properly, and that's what actually matters to the few people that have one of these. For some hotkeys, Start and L1 or R1 will raise or lower the brightness. Home button at the top is where you can save or load state, and R2 is fast forward, but if a game uses R2, it conflicts with it currently. Right now there isn't any combination hotkeys applied, which I'm sure is something the devs will look at and maybe implement. Otherwise, there's not much else to say here. This is just a better stock operating system, and it's what the A30 should have shipped with. It's still not a perfect device and I'm not sure it will change much on my recommendations, but I can at least say that it's usable now, and it's in a way better position. There's still some bugs and kinks to work out for the Spruce devs, but it's pretty cool to see how fast they did this, and once again is just another example of how the community has to fix manufacturing issues. I don't know where Miu has been, but they really haven't done anything since this release. And once again, the community does this for free and does it better. So, yay. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk about retro handhelds. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.